Hello there, this is Ron Wills coming back at you with yet another podcast. Crises in Black Sexual Politics Review, The Pimp Horror Complex in Everyday Life. Now, that was an um, interesting chapter or interesting essay in uh, the book Crises in Black uh, Sexual Politics. Uh, it was written by Dr. Joseph Scott and Dr. James Stewart. Right. And the first paragraph in the essay said the crew and this remember, this is going back. <laughs> this is going back back in the day. Like I said in the first part of this series, you read this and you realize there's nothing new under the sun. So what they wrote was, they said the Crusaders have released a record called Street Life. Donna Summer uh, permeates the airways with a piece called entitled Bad Girls. And Linda Clifford's fame continues to grow through the impact of Don't Give It Up. The lyrics of these contemporary songs speak to the processes of pimping and whoring inherent in the ways black males and females relate to each other in everyday life. You know? And what they continue, they continue by saying the common theme that emerges is that professional and non-professional pimping and horn are pervasive in our community today. You know, evidently they are such intrusive parts of black everyday life that the poets and the songwriters feel obliged to reflect them back to us to force a critical assessment of the nature of the social forces we are allowing to destroy our girls, boys, and relationships. Right. Basically, they outline in the whole, they outline in the money game. Now, a lot of times when people will talk about the game and pimping or when, um, you know, we talk about acculturated prostitution or as uh, Warren Bowens might, will call it acceptable hoes, people get mad. But these are two academics that talked about it. And nobody, it's not just a man thing, it's a woman thing, it's everybody doing it. In fact, when I did my last video, when I talked about the pretty men and the working women, there's a lot of guys on some low rent gigolo stuff. They figure, hey, if I look cute enough, some women will come out here and buy me clothes, take care of me and everything. And that's, that's a big thing. You get a lot of these dudes, like some of these professional baby daddies and stuff, and you ask the women why they deal with him, they be like, he cute. It, it, like you look at, sometimes every now and then they might show up on some court show or something, divorce court or something like that. And, you know, like I saw one the other day, and you got this old dude, think he might have about 20 kids. He he same age as me, but he got his hair braided like he a youngin. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Right? But it's a, it's a very, it's a very, uh... It's a, it's, a very, it's a very simple concept. Everybody, people are not relating just on the basis of, like, emotional or spiritual compatibility or really even sexual compatibility, but they're relating on a transactional basis. How much money they getting out of this? You know, it, I mean, it could be a sugar daddy, sugar mama thing, or it could be like, you know what, I got to get my rent paid, or it could be tricking. It could be tricking. If you, look, you know, like I, I remember I had a young lady and she said, uh, she said something, right, about me paying for, I mean, it was, I forgot what the exact comment was now, but I just said, no, that would just make you a hoe. If you know, if your time to spent with me is predicated on how much money I would be willing to spend on you, that makes you an acceptable hoe. Now, it's different if, you know what, we know each other, we develop something, and I say, you know what, I want to do this, and I don't mind, you know, sponsoring it. And that, no, that's not even the right word. I don't mind paying for it, treating you. But then there's already an establishment of an emotional connection. But when you start out with it being transactional, it's like, boom. And that's very much part of the game. I mean, you have one of the things they talked about in the article was, yeah, you had the professional pimps and hoes, but then you got what they call uh, nickel pimping and whoring. In fact, what they wrote, they said, from ongoing research, we find that the nickel pimping and whore, whoring is a source of widespread conflict and mistrust in the black community. Such behaviors are so common that men and women must 
always be at the ready lest they be used under the guise of being loved. Now, you got a lot of cats on here who want to talk about game and all of that. That's really how I learned the game. Because the game I learned coming up was, okay, how can you get with this woman without having to spend your money? That's how pervasive it was. That was the game. Hey, that, was, that was the level of your game. Can you talk to this woman, get sex from her, without having to give up anything? And a lot of that's really if, if you're able to do that, you were held in high esteem. Because most guys got can't do that. Because it starts when you're young. It starts when you're young. In fact, uh, another book which I've uh I've referenced frequently on this channel, very influential book for me, is Money Issues in Black Male Female Relationships. He did a whole book talking about that. How it influences someone's choice. All right? Now, of course, you know, it ain't like a total thing because, you know, the pretty men and working women is still a viability. But even that's a, that's still a money thing. Why are these pretty men dealing with these working women? Why? In fact, the uh, master teacher BGS, he had did something on uh, Jesse Williams. Y'all remember that? You know, that one, that, that was issue there. She basically bought it, his wife, his ex-wife. Or whatever she is to him now, basically bought and paid for him. But that's a transactional thing. She paid for that, so it, it's very it's very persuasive. The money the money thing is very persuasive. Now, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of men especially think, okay, well I can just you know what I'm just going to trick. I'm going to get that money. But that's pimping and whoring. You know, that's pimping and whoring. In fact. Uh, the number of pimps out there, like everybody got this spectacular view of pimps. A lot of pimps are on some low level. They more like that cat from Hustle and Flow, you know, and maybe getting some money there. And I mean, it's like, and really, it's it's so per pervasive. It really is part of the system. It's really part of the American system, really. It's capitalism, right? Now, one of the things the uh, esteemed uh, doctors who wrote this suggested, right, you know, of course, they, they, they say it's based on racism and everything, but some and some of it is because if you if you got a thing, OK, if there's a lack of economic opportunity, how can you make money? Now, if a woman knows she cute, you know, she cute, she got a nice body and everything. And some man is willing to have a transactional relationship with her in terms of they will pay for or trick Shoot, she's likely to do it. And I've actually known some women like that. They weren't professional whores. They weren't like strippers or dancers. They were ordinary women, but they meet some guy who's willing to, if not give them money outright, but pay their bills. I've known several. And if you see these women, if you see these women, these look like upstanding women. But it's a pervasive thing. And it's something to be dealt with, right? And, you know, of course, you know, like I said, they talk about the game for employment or anything. It's like the term hustling. That's what that's really where it came from. Right. You know, hustling, you know, doing whatever you got to do to get money, you know. And, you know, the whole pimping and whoring thing. That's basically uh, two of them, you know. And, you know, of course, it's a part of the dating thing. And like I said, it starts early. It starts early. If a woman chooses, if a woman has a choice between two men, one has access to a car and the other guy take the bus, a lot of times that guy with the, I don't care what that guy without the car look like, the woman might go for the guy who has it. In fact, um, as was mentioned in Money Issues in Black Male Female Relationships, you know, a woman might be considered mature for going for that guy with the money. And the money and the status. In fact, when I did the video talking about, you know, the professional brothers get more play than Pookie and Ray Ray, the hood dudes, that's part of it, too. It's transactional. Pookie and Ray Ray don't have any money. And unless they handsome, too, or, very, or pretty dudes, too, unless they judge this pretty or something like that, that's why they ain't getting it. See, that dude, money's still, look. Even though I've gone on record as saying well, sex appeal can trump money and status. I've said that, but I ain't say st money and status still don't work. If that's all you got, no, it's still going to affect it. Your perception of money, and that's a, that's a big thing, especially in black relationships. The perception 
of money is going to happen. And in fact, I would even, even though I'm talking about crises in black sexual politics, I would, ext- I would, I would extend that to the entire community. You know, I would, to like white America as well, the mainstream. In fact, uh, many pimps used to say, used to consider like regular relationships trick marriages. Trick marriages. Read this book called uh, Black Players. It talks about that, right? So this is like a pervasive, that's like a pervasive thing. It's, it's, it's something that's still affecting black relationships. See, one of the things I wanted to talk about that, a lot of times, even when we discuss stuff, we still not discussing those things. We still, we still not discussing it. You know, I remember I did a seminar and... And I think I talked about this on my woman's channel. You had some women, you know, had a woman stand up and say, look, we don't care about that money. And then some women actually stood up and they were like, oh, no, you spend that money, we'll take it. <laughs> you know, and some more women, they were like, oh, yeah, if that dude got some money, I'd go out with him. So, <laughs> so it's, it's happening all the time. And really, even though they put it on racism and stuff, I would say it's pervasive in this society. A lot of uh, ladies like some of these white guys and stuff getting some play, thinking they doing something. It was like, no, a lot of times you think it's your game or something or you think it's your looks. A lot of times that woman is assessing like your level of uh, money. <laughs> she assessing it. Man, trust me, happens a lot. But... It's a, once again, the link is in the description box for this book. Now, if y'all want me to do anything else on it or maybe take it further uh, or maybe even maybe if enough people want to pick up the book and maybe do a study group on it or something. Or I might even start a new channel just for study groups, just for hangouts and studying. I might. I'm feeling academic uh, in 2019, getting back to my real roots. Yeah, I know I'm complicated. I'd be like, damn, Ron. We thought you was a felon or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm very complicated. Anyway, right? That's it for now. But something to think about. I'm like, you know, one of the main reasons I want to share it, and I'm sharing this book. A lot of times I I see, I think a lot of times we we argue about stuff, we see stuff, but we're not really asking the deeper questions. Okay, why is this? All right? Why is this? You know, like uh, one of the questions I saw something recently and I, th- I thought about doing something on it, but it was an article critical of the entire black manosphere. And I understand where the dude was coming from. It was a man who wrote it. But at the same time, I was like, well, are you asking why so many people are like this? And I think if we start doing that, then all of a sudden we have to say, OK, well, this is the issue we have to address. And that's where some people get uncomfortable because to truly address any of these issues um, people had to change their entire lifestyle, but maybe I'll talk about that in another video. So anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Peace and many blessings.